So in this video, I'm going to talk about um, chord mode in MIDI cake Arp, um, and then put that together in a little arrangement. Um, but I think it's an opportunity to show off some of the things that Arp can do as well. Um, so let's start with just a simple piano sound. So um, let's have a look at the settings. Um, it's just a simple piano. This is running a sequence of four steps. We can change that. Um, it's got a bounce that is just a hop. Each single step is just rising up the sequence. Um, up the scale, as it were, I suppose. And the direction determines which way it moves through. So we can send it, can send it down the scale. Or we can send it up, down the scale, etc. You've seen all this before. But let's leave it like that for now and change the mode from ARP to chord. And immediately you see it's playing all the notes at the same time as a chord. Now, if we change the number of steps that are available to that chord, you can see what happens. It only plays one note because there's only one step. It's playing the steps of the sequence. So the sequence being a rising up the scale um, in the direction of, of up the scale. And um, as we increase the number of steps, you can see what it's doing. And we can invert that. So, so it'll go in the opposite direction. So what can we do with that? Because that's pretty boring in its, in its own right. But what can we do with it? Well, let's take a look at, um, for example, let's set our steps back to something more reasonable. And uh, let's have a look at rhythm patterns. So I'm currently on a rhythm length of one. I've picked a rhythm pattern out here. And um, I can edit this if I wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to change the length and, and you'll kind of see what happens. So I'm on the length setting. I can go pattern setting or length setting. And you see it's affecting the velocity. So if we put this up to 16, you'll get this pattern occurring there. Um, what else can we do with that? Um, let's take modulation. Um, and let's put a modulation on the steps. So that's, that's basically, it's a modulation of this parameter. And its starting point is whatever the value is for steps. The shape of the modulation determines how it moves over time and the rate is how, how much time. So here I've got two bars and as you saw, it was a kind of sine wave form and there's a number of different waves that we could pick. Um, as I increase that, you'll see what happens. So over, what was it, two bars, it's gonna add and remove notes from the number of steps. It's actually easier to, to see if we reduce the length then of the pattern down to one. So you can see it's running that shape, but the parameter that it's driving is the steps parameter. And as we change the steps parameter, it changes the baseline for that modulation. You see what happens, and obviously as we, as we go up, we'll get more. Let's put it back to four, and let's change our, our and let's do a ramp up. So it'll start low and then over two bars, it'll, it'll go right up. We can set the steps to one, for example, and set the rate to a number of bars. And if we start it from scratch, it'll start with one and just keep adding steps over time. Let's reduce this down and get back to something that uh, we can work with. So what else can we do? Well, um, let's turn that modulation off for now, because we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the effects, um, effects again, we can affect any of these parameters below the line. Um, I'm going to affect no offset in this case, and we'll see what happens then. Um, the seed is the pattern that it's going to use, and we can pick any one of these seeds, but this one looks like a one that's going to have a, a big effect on the bass line in the middle. And we're going to run this over one bar so it will repeat. Again, if we, if we take the steps down to one, you can see what it's doing to the note. 
to start with. Yeah, it's going quite significantly out. The amount determines how far away from that baseline it, it works. So let's set it down to something like this. And you see what it's, what it's doing. And this is the pattern that it's running over the number of uh, the number of steps. Um, sorry, no, it's the number of number of steps that have been played in one bar. If we increase this to two bars, it will be the number of steps that are played over two bars, and so on and so forth. If we change the number of steps now, we'll start to get chords, and the no offset is affecting the position of the chord. Pretty simple. So let's now um, let's add another modulation, but this time we'll affect time division. So time division is is how many beats you get in a bar. Well, let's drop this down to two beats in a bar, and we're going to run a rising ramp shape, and we'll run it over three bars. Why not? Let's get slightly out of phase with with modulation A, which is running over two bars. And let's increase that amount and see what happens. Let's add our first modulation back in. And we'll get different patterns because of the different bar lengths. We get um, sort of like a polyrhythmic effect going on, but with the modulation itself. It's all out of phase. Um, let's add our, our rhythm pattern back. And we can get really kind of subtle effects with that. So just running through how I've configured this, uh, I'm using Ableton and uh, a contact multi-rack. On ARP 1, I've got a piano. On ARP 2, I've got another piano. And I'm also running a flute sound a little bit later on a different MIDI channel. Um, on ARP 3, we have some vocal samples, courtesy of Glaze. And on ARP 4, some strings, thanks to the, the Free Orchestra, which is a fantastic free um, pack from Project Sound. So there you go. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe because it helps the channel and spread the word about Mini Cake. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.